Hi, this is Billy Dillard here from Billy Dillard Art. Uh, today this is going to be a short video on carving a mushroom with a chainsaw. So first I want to discuss a little bit about what uh, the tools I'll be using. So right here you got your just basic little Poland chainsaw. Any chainsaw you might have, it's got just your standard bar. And then when I come back and do the uh, this pattern here, I'll be using the Makita grinder with a King Arthur disc on it. There again, that's the disc that you got to be <laughs> extremely careful with. Um, here in protection, I got your standard foam ear in protection you stick in your ears. So I use those and these also uh, because it's no fun with that buzz and ring in your ear for the rest of your life. So I highly recommend you do that. So anyway, this here is the blank of the one that I haven't carved yet. It's half of that one. So here's the one that I've already carved to uh, kind of show you guys what we got going on here. So there it is. So it'll be mounted right on the side of the fairy hut or hobbit house, whatever person would want to call it. And I hollowed it out on the back side. This hasn't cured out yet, it's still wet. And the purpose of that is to keep it from drying out too quick and just cracking like crazy. So I, just, I use the sealer on it. There's multiple sealers out there on the market. Anybody interested in what sealers I use, just um, contact me on Facebook and ask me. I'd be more than willing to share that information with you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a break here, go get my large chainsaw, and uh, start cutting on this thing. Okay, now I'm going to go to a smaller saw. Um, that was, I'm just blocking it in right now. I don't try to get the exact size I want first, so I always cut in the round instead of. If you cut too much straight uh, without rounding your piece, you can end up taking too much off. It's kind of hard to put it back on. So anyway, I just kind of gradually take chunks out until I get it rounded the way I want, get it roughed in. So I'll get the other chainsaw fired up and we'll go at it. All righty. Gravy work. gentlemen that's what can happen <laughs> the, uh, the chain hit something and kicked back on me so we're gonna have to take a break because I got to put this chain back on
So here's my uh, steel 250. And you see that tip? They call that a dime tip. This is just a carving bar. So I'm just going to kind of get it a little bit closer than what I got it now. So I'll get this fired up and we'll get with it. Come on, baby. Or maybe I'll get it fired up. Getting closer. Makita grinder with my King Arthur disc on it and uh, we'll put the texture in there real quick. So hang on. Well, I'm going to start carving now. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm doing here, um, where you see me dig, dig so much out right there, that was because I'd cut in pretty deep with a chainsaw. So, you know, sometimes when you do that, you may think, oh my gosh, I messed it up. But you, in most situations, I find I can go ahead and cut that out and it's really not a problem. And you notice I don't really go for straight lines. I really don't care for straight lines. I like stuff with a lot of form to it. So that's why you kind of see me make a wave pattern or an S pattern. Um, I just seem to like that. Kind of, for me, it's just, I don't know, it's just something I do. Anyway, so that's why I was doing it. And the way you see me hacking in there with this here, don't try to do that when you're first starting off with this piece of equipment because if it kicks back on you, like you're grinding in here, and it kicks back, it'll just flip over on you, and then it's going to get you and just eat you up. So go with this thing really slow till you get very comfortable with it. And, and when, even when you get comfortable with it, make sure you're holding on to this thing really good where it don't jump out of your hand. And that's why I like the, the paddle button. Because when I let off of it, you know, it, it can stop. But if you got one where you just turn it on... That thing can just jump out of your hand. It's just still running wide open. So I, that's why I don't use the ones where you just turn the button on and it's going. Okay, well, I'm going to get back at this as soon as I uh, put my headset back together. 
There's things that do happen to you on the job, and I'm just not even going to bother editing that. <laughs> Here we go. Something else you notice on this here is uh, I didn't draw any lines or anything. I just kind of freehand this here. Um, I can I can kind of tweak it and change it as I go along, and I can I can carve in a like a scoop scallop pattern here. And then I can come in and then just join them in. And if I get off a little bit, it's not a problem. So you can just kind of pick up on another line and recreate a line. So uh, if you decide to do this, don't stress out on having to have a pattern or have to have your lines perfect or anything like that because in nature, if you look at nature, um, it's the things that are change directions, but everything still flows. That's what really catches my eye. So uh, for this year, I, I kind of like it to look really organic. So this is basically, um, I got to come in and I gotta uh, round this top edge over and scallop the top out a little bit, but it gives you a really good basic idea on how to do this. I'll take it and go set it up there against the side, side of the building, kind of give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. All right, so uh, it's gonna go just a little bit higher than this, and this stuff won't be underneath it, evidently. And like I say, I still gotta round the top edge, and I gotta seal it. And then I noticed, you know, that not me, but somewhere had done a, somebody had done a plunge cut with a, a saw right in here. So I'm gonna take some uh, Polygem 307 light and uh, fill that crack up. So it's not a big deal to me, easy to fix. Uh, stuff like that happens. No need to freak out or panic about it. So anyway, I'll get that done and then when I get them mounted up, I'll put up another uh, video where you can see the end result. So if you have any questions as far as what I did, materials I use, um, what you'd like to see on if you had a fairy hut or a hobbit house, uh, let me know. Ask me. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Later.